Hi there, I'm Lisa Dale Miller, author of Effortless Mindfulness, Genuine Mental Health Through Awakened Presence. This is a new textbook on Buddhist psychology for mental health professionals. And this is the first in a series of video musings on experiences I've had in the therapy room. I'd like to talk about a particular set of dialogue that I did with a patient, which really elucidates mentally constructing the future and how it can actually be used in the therapy room, even though, of course, we all know mental constructions of the future don't actually have much to do with the way the future actually shows up but they can be useful to be able to unwind some of the upset and distress that people experience when they are running scenarios about the future. So in this particular experience, a patient said to me they had received an evite for an event and they went to the website and noticed that the person that they had ended a relationship with six months prior to that was actually going to the event. So they said that when they saw this, they started to immediately run scenarios about what it would be like being in the same place with them because actually they hadn't talked to each other since my patient had brought an end to the relationship. And the other thing that's important to know is that though she tried very hard to do an intentional ending, this other person wasn't on the same page with that, and she felt they really didn't have the kind of closure that she had wished for. So in the therapy room, um, when she told me about this, I said, well, you know, any interest in looking at some of the mental constructions you have about what might happen if you went to this art opening and saw this person? She's said, oh, that sounds pretty interesting. I said, all right, take a moment now and just imagine yourself walking into this venue and seeing this person. So she sat for a moment and I said, well, what are you noticing? And she said, well, I see myself walking in and I can see a few other people around that I know. She said, and then I see him with a glass of wine looking at a painting. She said, and I immediately noticed that I felt this tightness in my stomach. It was almost like I felt like I had an impulse to step back. And I said, okay, can you just hang out for a minute with that impulse to step back? And I could see that immediately her body just sort of went like this. I said, well, what happened? She said, well, when I really sat here with that feeling of everything lifting up and wanting to move, she said, what happened was I realized that I had actually just seen some people that I really liked <laughs> and that I wanted to go over and say hello to. I said, okay, well, why don't you see yourself going over and saying hello to your friends? So she sat again for a minute, and a little smile came across her face. And I said, well, what's happening now? And she said, well, you know, I'm walking across to say hello to my friend, but I'm also noticing that there's a part of me that's monitoring what my ex is doing. And I said, well, why don't we just hang out with that part of you for a minute? So we sat again. And I could see that in her chest area, there was some kind of um, clenching. And I said, well, what are you noticing right now? She said, well, I'm noticing that I'm worried he's going to turn around and see me. And I said, okay, well, what are you worried about? What's going to happen if he turns around and sees you? She said, well, I don't know. I'm, I'm sort of confused. I have a lot of thoughts going through my mind about what I should say or what I should do. And, and I said, well, okay, why don't we just let you rest for a moment, feeling the feeling of your body here on my shoulder. So she said, okay. And she sat. And I noticed that immediately, again, her body sort of rested back into the sofa. And I said, well, what are you noticing now? And she said, well, I 
I'm noticing sort of this open space feeling. And I said, well, are you noticing that right here in the room? And she said, no, I was back in the scenario and I saw myself feeling myself standing on the floor with my feet grounded on the floor. And she said, and, and I felt a kind of spaciousness. And I said, well, were you still seeing him? She said, yeah, I was still seeing him. He was still looking at the painting. And, but I was actually feeling myself there in the gallery, in the space. She said, and, and it felt much more open. And I said, okay, well, why don't you just sit with that for a minute? And so suddenly I noticed that her eyes were going off a little bit. And that told me she was leaving a little bit. And I said, well, what just happened there? And she said, well, when I went back into the scenario, he had turned around. And I said, well, what happened when he turned around? She said, I don't know. I kind of left. And I said, well, that doesn't surprise me. She said, it doesn't surprise me either because I probably really felt like leaving at that moment. I said, yeah, you probably did. She said, but I don't know. I just didn't have the experience of feeling like I wanted to leave. I said, okay, how about if we run this again? And let's have him still looking at the painting and you feeling your body standing there in the gallery. And I said, and I, what I want you to do is I want you to stay with the feeling of your body in the gallery and see him turn around and see you. She said, okay. So I could see her eyes were remaining here, meaning they weren't doing this. They weren't going off. They actually were here. So I knew that even though she was in the mental construction imagining, that she actually was having an embodied experience of observing her running the mental scenario, but the imagining she was having was her remaining in her body in the scenario. That is a whole different presentation, psychologically and somatically, in the room when you're looking at a patient. They're actually sitting there imagining, and you can see that they're still in their body, but they're also in the thoughts they're having. So they're observing and aware of the thoughts and engaged in the thought process, and they're not leaving. And suddenly I saw a big smile come across her face. And I said, well, what just happened? And she said, well, this time when I stayed in my body, in the gallery, and I saw him turn around, she said, I felt really strong. And I connected with him. I saw us connecting, my eyes seeing him, and suddenly I didn't feel so afraid. I said, well, what was that like? She said, well, I didn't know what I wanted to do, but I didn't feel afraid. I said, wow, you didn't know what you wanted to do, but you also didn't feel afraid. She said, yeah, it gave me some time. She said, I realized I actually had time. I had enough time to figure out whether or not I felt in that moment like I wanted to go up and just say hello. And I said, well, that's great. She said, yeah. So I said, okay, well, why don't we finish the scenario and just see what happens? So she said, okay. I said, so again, see him turning around, see yourself remaining in the feeling of you being there and see yourself, not sure what you want to do, but then rest in the feeling of not being sure of what to do. And then the smile got really wide on her face. She was like, oh my gosh, I, when I asked myself, rather than what do you want to do, or what does it feel like to not know what to do, she said, right then, I just knew that it was okay. That I just wanted to go and just go up and just say, hi, 
It's been a while. I just wanted to say hello. And I said, well, what did that feel like? She said, that felt so liberating. And then suddenly her eyes filled with tears. And actually my eyes kind of filled with tears too. And she said, I realized, you know, I really didn't have to work it out and right in that moment in the gallery. That he's a person and I'm a person and we could just say hi. So I wanted to share this experience with all of you because it's a really great example of what happens when you use the capacity of the human mind to actually predict, to run scenarios. We're really good at this, you know? We're wired up to do prediction. But if you use it intentionally with awareness, you can actually help a patient embody a particular scenario that they might be worried about and then to have that kind of spontaneous presence within even a mental construction about something. So at the end of this little piece of work that she and I did, I said to her, so what are you going to do? And she said, you know, I'm going to, when I get home, I'm going to go back to the Evite site. And I'm going to respond and say that I'm going. She said, because I really want to be at the opening. I want to see the artwork. I know there'll be other people there. And now I know that I can be free to respond if this other person is there. I can be free to respond in a way that will reflect how I really feel in that moment. And I said, that's great. So... I offer this to all of you and I wish you a wonderful week of work with your patients in your therapy room.